Dick Astor is one of those individuals who has advanced the field of hematology in a very measurable, important way. He is one of, if not the preeminent researcher around platelets. I think of my father as a classic triple threat. He's impacted the field in terms of the diagnostics uh, he's helped to develop to help patients with thrombocytopenia. He's also a mentor for students, for residents, for fellows, and for young faculty members. And he's a, a person that provides a huge resource for the medical community at large. When I was in my uh, early teens, I ran across a book called Microbe Hunters. It was a book that really captured my imagination and led me to enter medical school. Blood was considered to be an amazing thing. Blood cells are beautiful. Anybody that's ever looked at a stained nose, how beautiful the leukocytes and the red cells and the platelets are, and even more so in bone marrow. That kind of appealed to me, and I spent three years in research training in hematology at the National Institutes of Health. I went back to Boston to train further in hematology when ultimately when a position opened up here in Milwaukee to head what was then called the Milwaukee Blood Center. We went out there as a young man, I think he taught himself on the fly, and he had the wherewithal to figure out how to do it and do it very well. He had the foresight to understand the importance of not only a sustainable blood supply, but also creating an environment where research could flourish. Dr. Astor has had a huge impact on the field of hematology and bringing the science of immunology to the field of hematology. Part of his authority comes from his brilliance and from his track record of incredible scientific contributions. I mean, so much of what we know about platelets comes from him. He's very interested in drug-induced thrombocytopenia and, and how uh, drugs uh, cause thrombocytopenia. He's discovered how people with certain drugs can start making antibodies to uh, their own platelets and cause their platelet levels to drop to dangerous levels, and it led to diagnostic tests that are done all over the world. We established this laboratory in the around 1974-75 to accept samples for testing to identify such antibodies when possible. And that lab is still in operation. And that's one of the thrusts of our current research, to learn more about what happens at the molecular level when these drugs somehow perturb the immune response. He and his associate, Dr. John Visentine, uh, made the discovery that hit antibodies recognize a protein called platelet factor 4, a PF4, when in complex with linear polyanions. And I would say that that, that one discovery has saved thousands and thousands of lives. Prior to that, there was nearly no good way to tell in using a laboratory test uh, who has hit and who does not. Because of Dick's interest in immunology and immunohematology, he understood the importance of um, the HLA system. In the 1970s, NIH wanted to look at whether HLA typing was important for the transfusion of platelets. We were one of the first uh, centers to uh, address that issue by typing blood donors in large numbers for these HLA antigens. I can remember on one occasion on a patient that was to be transplanted in Seattle where the uh, bone marrow was har harvested here in Milwaukee and um, was in fact the first uh, child with aplastic anemia to be successfully treated uh, with bone marrow from an unrelated individual. He has trained people in blood banking techniques around the world, making blood available and safe for individuals. Well, I'm one of Dr. Astor's many, many trainees that he uh, put out in the field of transfusion medicine and hematology. I had the great honor and opportunity to get to know Dr. Astor on a personal level and see, and can see exactly how he operates, how he can set the bar extremely high, inspire trainees, uh, inspire junior faculty, and inspire all of us to do better than we're doing. Wallace Kohler was really a remarkable man. I have a special connection with him because 
In 1963 or 4, the Thorndike Laboratory in Boston purchased one of the very first colder counters. And I'm deeply grateful to him for, for all the, uh, the hard work he did to make life a lot easier for all of us nowadays. I'm a little bit biased, but all I can say is, Dad, congratulations, thank you so much for your love and mentorship over the course of the years. Receiving the Wallace H. Kohler Award for uh, lifetime recognition for achievement in hematology is just uh, a humbling experience. I'd like to think that uh, it reflects the fact that, that some of the things we've accomplished are appreciated and recognized by the hematology community, and I'm deeply grateful to Ash for this, uh, this recognition.